Why it sucks to be Neptune. Neptune is the coldest, windiest planet in the solar system, where storms rage for years, winds roar faster than fighter jets, and sunlight takes over four hours just to show up. It rains diamonds, but you'd be crushed before you could grab one. No solid ground, no visitors since 1989, and even its biggest moon orbits the wrong way like it's trying to escape. While Mars gets rovers and Saturn gets love songs, Neptune just spins in silence. So how does the most beautiful planet end up being the most ignored? Neptune isn't just cold, it's stupid cold. We're talking about a planet so far from the sun that the sunlight takes over four hours just to get there. Think about that. You could watch an entire movie, make popcorn, scroll through your phone, and the light from the sun would still be on its way. That's how deep into the solar system Neptune lives. And because it's sitting out there in the icy suburbs of space, the average temperature is a jaw-dropping negative 373 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just a few degrees above absolute zero, the point where atoms basically stop moving. This isn't hoodie weather, this is your atoms might give up weather. It's colder than anywhere you can possibly imagine on Earth, even Antarctica. In fact, compared to Neptune, Antarctica looks like a tropical getaway. But the chill isn't the only problem. Neptune's weather is a full-blown cosmic nightmare. This planet holds the title for the fastest winds in the entire solar system. These winds can reach speeds of up to 1,300 miles per hour. That's faster than a fighter jet, faster than a speeding bullet, faster than your sibling running to snitch on you. It's the kind of wind that doesn't just mess up your hair, it would rip your entire face off. And unlike Earth's storms that might last a few hours or days, Neptune's storms go on for years. Giant dark spots similar to hurricanes appear and swirl violently for long stretches of time before they randomly vanish. One of the biggest ones NASA ever saw was about the size of Earth itself. Just imagine an Earth-sized storm that won't quit, whipping winds around like a cosmic blender. It's chaos but on a planetary scale, and as if the freezing temps and killer winds weren't enough, Neptune also likes to show off with diamond rain. Yes, actual diamonds. Because of the pressure deep within Neptune's atmosphere, scientists believe that carbon atoms can get squeezed so tightly they form diamonds and fall like rain. Sounds fancy, right? Like a billionaire's dream come true. But before you pack a space shovel and plan a mining mission, here's the catch. You wouldn't survive long enough to pick up even one. The pressure is so intense that anything human-made or human-operated would be crushed long before it reached the diamond zone. It's like having buried treasure at the bottom of the ocean, but the water is poison, the pressure will flatten you like a soda can, and the boat sinks on the way there. Neptune is beautiful, no doubt about that. It's got that rich blue color, soft cloud bands, and a mysterious glow. But don't let that cool vibe fool you. Beneath the calm surface is a violent, freezing world that would destroy anything from Earth in seconds. It's the solar system's ice-cold heartbreaker. Silent, distant, and completely unforgiving. The sun basically treats Neptune like it forgot it ever existed. While planets like Mercury and Earth are basking in warmth and soaking up solar attention, Neptune's out there, alone, freezing, and barely getting noticed. To put it into perspective, Neptune only receives about one nine-hundredth of the sunlight that Earth does. That's not just a little less, it's almost nothing. It's like being at a party where the DJ only plays your favorite song once, at the very end, after most people have already left. The sunlight that powers life on Earth, grows plants, and keeps everything from freezing solid? It takes over four hours to reach Neptune. By the time it gets there, it's so weak and stretched out, it's like getting a flashlight beam from across an entire football field. Neptune is stuck in what you could call the solar system's suburbs, way past the inner circle where all the fun happens. It's cold, dark, and lonely. And the sun, it's too busy flirting with planets closer to home. Mercury gets scorched with heat. Venus and Earth are practically glowing with solar love. Even Mars, dusty and dry as it is, gets more sunlight and more attention. Meanwhile, Neptune's out there waving from the edge trying to get noticed like the quiet kid at the back of the class. And the sun isn't even glancing its way. That sunlight Neptune does receive? It's not even enough to power a decent solar calculator, let alone fuel anything close to warmth or growth. You'd think that with all its mystery, color, and power, someone would care enough to pay Neptune a visit. But no. 
The only space mission to ever get close was Voyager 2, and that happened back in 1989. It didn't land, didn't orbit, just flew by, took a few pictures, and moved on. That's like someone showing up for five minutes at your birthday party, snapping a selfie, and leaving before the cake is cut. And that was over 35 years ago. Since then, nothing. No rovers, no orbiters, no second dates. Neptune's basically been ghosted by NASA ever since. Meanwhile, other planets are practically celebrities. Mars has been crawling with rovers for years. It gets shiny new missions, helicopters, live streams. It's the popular kid in the space club. Saturn had an entire love affair with the Cassini mission. That spacecraft spent 13 years orbiting the gas giant, sending back breathtaking photos and gathering valuable data. Even Pluto, which isn't even considered a planet anymore, got a close-up with New Horizons. Asteroids, literal space rocks, are getting more attention than Neptune. Missions are landing on them, drilling into them, bringing pieces back. All while Neptune waits silently in the dark like, Hey, remember me? It's not like Neptune doesn't have anything interesting to offer. It has insane weather with the fastest winds in the solar system. It rains diamonds. Its atmosphere is wild, made of hydrogen, helium, and methane, and it's deep blue for a reason. It has 14 moons, including Triton, which orbits the wrong way and might crash into Neptune one day. This planet is like the perfect mystery novel, dark, intense, and full of surprises, but no one's reading it. Part of the problem is the distance. Neptune is really, really far away. Sending a spacecraft there takes years, even decades, and the cost is enormous. It's not a quick trip like Mars. But still, it feels unfair. With all we spend on exploring space, you'd think someone would make room in the budget to give Neptune the attention it deserves. Scientists agree. It holds clues to the formation of our solar system, planetary weather, and maybe even new physics. But for some reason, it's always last in line. So while the sun shines bright on its favorite inner planets and NASA sends missions to rocks and ice balls, Neptune remains in the shadows, cold, beautiful, and forgotten. It deserves more than a single flyby and a few blurry photos. It deserves a proper visit, a deeper look, and a place in the conversation. Because if one thing's clear, it's this. Just because you're quiet and far away doesn't mean you don't matter. And Neptune? It matters more than we've ever given it credit for. Neptune has 14 moons. 14. That's more than enough to build a little moon family and call it a day, right? But somehow, none of them are famous. Not a single one is trending on space Twitter, if that were a thing. Saturn's Titan gets love for possibly having lakes. Jupiter's Europa is always in the headlines for maybe having life. Even Pluto's moon Charon has a fan base. But Neptune? Its moons barely get mentioned. They're cool, sure, but they're weird too, like super weird. The biggest moon, Triton, is the definition of doing its own thing. While most moons orbit in the same direction their planet spins, Triton said, nah, and went the opposite way. It orbits backward. This isn't just rebellious for fun, it's scientifically strange. That backward motion tells scientists something big. Triton probably wasn't born around Neptune at all. Most likely, it used to be a dwarf planet from the Kuiper Belt, basically a space drifter, until Neptune's gravity pulled it in and made it stay, kind of like adopting a wild teenager and hoping for the best. But here's where it gets even more dramatic. Because of that weird orbit, Triton is slowly spiraling closer to Neptune. It's not in a stable path. One day, far in the future, it's either going to crash straight into Neptune or break apart and become a ring around the planet. Think about that. It could be an epic cosmic collision or a tragic breakup that leaves a glittering ring behind. Either way, it's complicated. And the rest of Neptune's moons? They don't even get a speaking role in this drama. They're small, quiet, and just kind of tag along. That's not the only strange thing going on with Neptune. Its atmosphere is like something out of a science fiction novel. That rich blue color you see in pictures? It's mostly thanks to methane gas. Yeah, the same gas that makes cow farts stink here on Earth. On Neptune, methane absorbs red light and reflects blue, which is why the planet looks like a frozen sapphire in space. Sounds pretty, but the reality is a little less glamorous. Neptune is basically a giant, cold, spinning ball of methane-powered chaos. And the chaos, it's wild. Neptune has the fastest winds in the entire solar system, 
they blast across the planet at over 1,300 miles per hour. That's faster than most fighter jets. These winds power storms so massive they make Earth's hurricanes look like light breezes. Neptune's storms are huge, some the size of Earth itself. And they don't just blow over after a day, they can last for years. Inside these storms, there's lightning, ice clouds, and layers of gases swirling in every direction. It's like the whole atmosphere is throwing a never-ending tantrum. Scientists still don't fully understand how Neptune gets that much energy out there, so far from the sun, but it's clear the planet's weather doesn't mess around. And if you're thinking of ever visiting Neptune, don't. You can't even stand on it. There's no ground, no surface to land on, no place to plant a flag. If you tried, you'd just fall endlessly through layers of gas, chemicals, maybe even a liquid ocean of ammonia or methane, and then you'd get squished, crushed by pressure so intense it makes the bottom of the ocean look like a pillow. The deeper you go, the worse it gets. Scientists think Neptune might have a rocky core way down there, but reaching it would be like trying to swim to the center of a black hole. Good luck with that. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below.